In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at factoring the sum of two squares. And um, before we get into how you factor the sum of two squares, and actually a lot of them don't factor, okay, but there are some that do, and I'll show you which ones do, a, a test to figure if, if it actually does factor or not. So we're going to take a look at something related, uh, the difference of two squares. Uh, let's say you're asked to factor x squared minus 25. It's the difference, difference being there's a subtraction sign between that term and that term. x squared is a perfect square because it's x squared and 25 is a perfect square because it's 5 squared and that factors into x plus 5 and x minus 5 um, because um, if and of course you can always check any factoring and I'll do that here you see if we were to expand this out uh, we can demonstrate that uh, it does give you x squared minus 25 so uh, x times x is x squared and if we multiply x by negative 5, we get minus 5x. And 5 times x is a plus 5x. And negative 5 times negative 5 is minus 25. So these are opposites, so they add to 0. So we do get, as the check, x squared minus 25. So it does work. So um, let me just get rid of that. Okay, so um, that that does work. Now we're talking about factoring the sum of two squares. That's what this tutorial is about. So x squared plus 25 is an example of the sum of two squares. Sum being there's a plus in between this perfect square and this perfect square. And this won't factor. Now I want to qualify what, actually I guess the words quantify, what exactly don't won't factor means. So first of all, uh, if you know about imaginary numbers or complex numbers, with complex numbers you can actually factor any uh, sum of two squares. Okay, and it'll actually work like this. So if you don't know about complex numbers, here's a quick little lesson. The complex number i is the number whose it's equal to the square root of negative one. If we square both sides, negative the root of negative one squared would be negative one. Because see, the square just gets rid of the root, so we get negative 1 here. So i is the number who, whose square root is negative 1, or i squared equals negative 1. You can say that both ways. So we could actually factor this into x plus 5i and x minus 5i. And as a check, just to make sure that this factoring works, uh, x times x is x squared. x times negative 5i is negative 5xi. 5i times x is 5xi and 5i times negative 5i is negative 25i squared. Well, these two terms here in the middle are opposites, so they add to 0, so we're just left with x squared minus the 25i squared. And just like I showed over here, i squared is negative 1, so we could put a negative 1 here, and multiply that by the negative 25 and get x squared plus 25. So that does demonstrate that those are the factors of this. But when we ask someone to factor something, we don't normally talk about using complex numbers, so uh, we're not actually looking for this. Uh, this doesn't factor over the real numbers, okay? And actually, I should I actually I said, I said real numbers is actually integers. We want integers in our factors, okay? We don't want roots, um, radicals, okay? We want actually just integers in the factors, like x plus five, x minus five. Those are integers. So. So the x squared plus 25 won't factor, okay? So we're not generally actually looking for this, even though that does work with complex numbers. So I'm going to introduce something called Sophie Germain's identity. Sophie Germain was a mathematician in the early 1800s, and this uh, identity is uh, attributed to her. Um, and <clears throat> x, a squared plus b squared factors into a plus b minus the root of 2ab, and then the same except plus root 2ab. And this only works if the 2ab, what's underneath this root here, is a perfect square. So that when you take the square root of it, you get, again, an integer value, an integral value. So um, since for uh, the x squared plus 25 up here, uh, the a would be x and the b would be 5. If we look at the 2ab quantity, then 2 times x times 5 would be 10x. And 10x isn't a perfect square. So x squared plus 25 won't factor over real numbers. So, uh, next two pages, we're going to take a look at uh, three examples, a couple that do and one that doesn't. So, uh, first of all, uh, x to the uh, fourth plus 625. Uh, sorry, I said x to the fourth. 4x four to the fourth plus 625. So, 2x squared squared would be 4x to the fourth. 
and 25 squared is 625, so that's your A and that's your B. So A is 2x squared and B is 25. So if we look at the uh, 2AB quantity, <clears throat> it'd be 2 times the 2x squared times the 25, and that's 100x squared. And we can take the square root of 100x squared and get a nice integer value here with the x, so it's 10x. So that uh, that is a perfect square. So this actually will work. So here's the identity again. So uh, 4x to the 4th plus 625 would equal, uh, and of course, so this is 2x squared at the beginning of each. 25 is added to that. And then this would be the minus 10x over here, the root of 2ab. Now, if you, uh, and we normally write trinomials in descending powers of x, so I'm just going to rewrite it with the 2x squared first, the negative 10x second, and the 25 in the end. So there's the factors of this. And again, just to uh, demonstrate that these actually are the factors, we're going to expand this times this and show that it does give you 4x to the fourth plus 625. So 2x squared times 2x squared is 4x to the fourth. So I'm going to multiply this by all three terms over here. So 2x squared times 10x would be 20x cubed and 2x squared times the 25 would be 50x squared. Now I'm going to do the negative 10x by each of these. So negative 10x times 2x squared would be negative 20x cubed negative 10x times positive 10x is negative 100x squared, and negative 10x times the 25 is minus 250x. So uh, lastly, the 25 times each of these, so 25 times 2x squared is 50x squared, 25 times 10x is 250x, and 25 times 25 is 625. And let me get my pen going here. There we go. So. Um, these are opposites, so they'll add zero. The reason I did this um, in these three lines is so the like terms were on top of one another, and you could easily see where all of them were. Uh, 50x squared and 50x squared adds to 100x squared, so that would be an opposite term with the negative 100x squared, so all that adds to zero. And as well, these are opposites, so they will add to zero. And so we're just left with 4x to the fourth plus 625, so that demonstrates that these are the factors of that binomial. So that's how that would factor. Uh, in B, uh, 9a to the 8th would be 3a to the 4th squared. Uh, 3 squared is the 9. And a to the 4th, remember when you have a, a power of a power, you multiply the exponents together. 4 times 2 is 8. And uh, 14 squared is 196, or the square root of 196 is 14. So a would be the 3a to the 4th, and b would be the 14. Uh, if we find that 2ab quantity, uh, we get uh, 2 times this times 14, which is 84 a to the 4th. Now, uh, a to the 4th is a perfect square, but 84 isn't. So since 84 isn't a perfect square, that won't factor over with integer coefficients of the trinomials. So that one was, won't factor. So one more example here in C. Uh, 64 c to the 24th plus 2401 y to the 8th. So the... Uh, uh, if we uh, square 8, we get 64, and of course, taking the square root of 24, we divide the uh, uh, exponent 24 by 2 to get 12. Uh, the square root of 24 or 1 is 49, and the square root of y to the 8th is y to the 4th. So that's your a and b quantities. So let's do the 2ab test again, 2 times this times this. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16, and 16 times 49 is 784. c to the 12th, y to the 4th. And of course, we could uh, demonstrate with uh, our calculator here that the uh, square root of 784 is a nice perfect square. So that's uh, the square root of that is uh, 28. And of course, these exponents are even. So that will, again, tell you that that is going to be a perfect square. So when we take the square root of 784, c to the 12th, y to the 4th, we get 28. Uh, taking the square root, we divide the exponents by 2, so 12 becomes 6, and y to the 4th, the divided for the 4 divided by 2 is 2. So there's the uh, the root of 2ab quantity. So here's the identity again, and to do the factoring. So it would be this plus this minus that. And then, of course, the same thing over here with a plus uh, before the 28 c to the 6th y squared term. So uh, again, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate that this works uh, one last time. So we'll multiply 8 c to the 12th by another 8 c to the 12th. 8 times 8 is 64. c to the 12th times c to the 12th. Add the exponents, you get 24. So c to the 24th. 
Uh, now, 8c to the 12th times 49y to the 4th. So 8 times 49 is 392. c to the 12th, y to the 4th. And then 8c to the 12th times the third term over here, 8 times 28 is 224. c to the 12th and c to the 6th multiply to give you c to the 18th. And then we have the y squared. So again, for, now for 49y to the 4th by each of these. So 49y to the 4th by 8c to the 12th will be 392. Uh, c to the 12th, y to the 4th, so I'm going to put this below this one because they're like terms. 49y to the 4th times another 49y to the 4th is 2401y to the 8c, there's that term right there. And 49y to the 4th by multiplied by the 28c to the 6th y squared. Uh, 49 times 28 is 1372. And we have a c to the 6th, y to the 4th times y squared is y to the 6th. And now lastly, the negative 28, c to the 6th, y squared times each of these. So negative 28 times 8 is 224. Uh, c to the 6th times c to the 12th is c to the 18th, adding the exponents and y squared. Negative 28, c to the 6th, y squared, multiplied by 49, y to the 4th, gives us negative 1372, and it would be c to the 6th. And then y squared times y to the fourth is y to the sixth, adding the exponents. And lastly, that term times its opposite over here, uh, negative 28 times positive 28, which should be negative 784, just like we did up here. Uh, c to the sixth times c to the sixth is c to the twelfth. y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. And we have a whole bunch of things again that are add to zero. So these two terms here, 392 and 392, Oh, sorry, I did these first, right? Uh, these are opposites. So the 392 and 392 c to the 12th y to the 4th adds to positive 784 c to the 12th y to the 4th. So those two together uh, are opposite with this one. And again, these are opposites too. So all we're left with is this c to the 4th, sorry, 64 c to the 4th plus 2401 y to the 8th. And so that demonstrates that those will be the factors of that binomial. So that's how you factor the uh, the difference of uh, sorry the sum of two squares and how you can tell which ones will actually factor because actually lots don't but there are a few that actually will factor and that's the end of the tutorial.